uh, to discuss uh, the issue about the Umwahia Court uh, nullification of 80, Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act. We're now being joined by Dr. Kayode Ajulo, a legal practitioner uh, from, the, uh, from London via Webex. Hello, um, Kayode. Um, a lot of uh, senior lawyers have been reacting, you know, negatively against that judgment. It sounds like uh, one can describe that as a procured judgment. Well, uh, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to join you. I won't want to call it a procured judgment in as much that every indices, the circumstances of the judgment, how it comes about may lead to that. But as a lawyer, I would not want to call it that, but it is so clear that that judgment is judgment that is said to be, have been given by incurium. Incurium in the sense that it is a judgment that is laced with error. Error in the sense that I wouldn't want to go with the narratives of being procured, but it's that some time, whatever we can call it judgment, as long as the judgment is still remaining force, but it is bound to be set aside. Set aside in the sense that this is a judgment where he is expunging the acts of the assembly and the national assembly never, never made a party to that judgment. And it's so clear from what it is that you notice that the defendant here, that is federal government being represented by the attorney general of the federation happened to be seen to be celebrating the judgment in which they lost it is very curious it's quite depressing as a lawyer where well, some of us first scandalized by that it's like seeing the nigerian army celebrating losing a battle to boko Haram and celebrating openly and to say we are not going to oppose it we are not going to appeal it i believe may that be that day not may that day not come when Nigeria and the, particularly the Office of Attorney General will be, will be accused of procuring the judgment or to, to be in conspiracy to defraud the entire country. I don't think that will happen, but it's so clear. Well, Kayode, it's quite troubling if you're going to compare this judgment with, you know, the Boko Haram insurgency, which has, you know, been a, a thorn on the flesh of most Nigerians. But I want to look at your own statement after that judgment was procured. You did actually say that it is not a right judgment. You actually did say that, um, you know, um, this is not right at all. So I want to get from you, really. Um, why do you think it's not a correct judgment? And why did you come up with this conclusion, really? And also marry that with... A lot of questions are being raised about the local standee of the individual who went to court, really, and what he, end, he, he intends to achieve with this judgment at the end of the day. Let's get your reactions to these two issues I've raised right now, and we'll continue. Well, let me quickly say this. You, we mentioned the issue of procured judgment and said we, that did not come to call the judgment of a court procured because as a lawyer, we deal with fact. There's no fact. I don't have that fact. So I would, I would want us to exercise caution in calling the judgment procured. But I don't think anything wrong in saying that that judgment was given by curium, that his judgment is given in error. In the error here, that, like I said, the judgment really challenged the the propriety of the National Assembly, particularly the Act of National Assembly, which is the Statute as Electoral Act. And the curious thing there is that the National Assembly were not made a party to that suit. Just today from London, a lot of the members of the National Assembly, the senators, more than 12 have already called to tell, to call, to ask for a way out in a way that maybe that, that judgment has to be appealed. And I think that's what it is. And like I said, the, it is so clear from the constitution what we call the national the, the the public the public officer what is called the appointee and the civil servant you can see this from the level and how they are appointed why one is at the mercy of the appointor others because the their, their appointment is a true truly it has to follow the law but for today for anybody to now equate the same and to quickly rush to somewhere and and those that are supposed to make the party were not made a party i know that it had an appeal this that judgment will be will be will be upturned so what i would want us to do is i won't really like want to speculate we i we need to we need to meet this with with a point and the issue of law and the best way to do that is to ensure that this matter is appealed and one is appealed and i'm sure the the courts 
the Court of Appeal will do the needful. Well, yes, I indeed. Uh, I mean, that the um, National Assembly has been encouraged to uh, appeal this matter. The National Assembly was never even joined in the original suit. Yeah. And uh, lawyers are even demanding very quickly to the proceedings of uh, that uh, court and uh, how it reached its judgment. And But why is the haste by the government to quickly gazette, you know, this judgment? The uh, expunging section 84 subsection 12 of the new electoral act i think i think that is a, i like that question and that's one of the things we need to interrogate the essence and the reason for for the east particularly when you know that the right of appeal particularly when it comes to full judgment has to be three months three months parties has right of appeal and i believe the party both the necessary party they will be party interested party they have the right and i just don't know the reason why the federal government that is the office of the attorney general federation is just so much in haste and i think the question is very far-fetching the 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 apc that's the ruling party their convention is coming next week and maybe one of the fear is that we need to quickly ensure that this that that's that provision is responsible so that we can allow those that wanted to take part in that convention to be there but uh, we but why must we shoot ourselves in the foot and that's why i said the apc that ruling party need to be very very careful because if they should go ahead to allow the appoint the, the political appointees to be part of their convention the other provision in that in that electoral act has already has already made it clear that any of such if it happened the entire convention will be null and void and will be rendered useless and what that one means that at the end of the day fear is that the ruling party may not partake in the forthcoming election because what the outcome of the convention we have a tell on the forthcoming election and what for god forbid what happened in Zamfara? What happened in Port in, in River State and other places where the ruling party lost his his, his, his grant may not happen this time around again because of the ambition of few 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 political appointees in the party. Well, God isn't coming to do that. The right thing must be done, Absolutely. and uh, the I law must be right followed must be uh, to the latter, and not uh, using the name of God in everything we we'll do just for the sake of it. Thanks so very much, uh, Kayode Ajulo. He joined us from London on raveling the issue of the Umwaya court judgment on uh, the Electoral Act, Section 84, Subsection 12.